In this third video about the X-Tool S1 laser, links to the other two will be below, I'm going to demonstrate just how easy it is to get started with the software and start producing something that you can actually use. These little boxes are so quick and easy to make because of the freely available tools that are on the internet. No cost whatsoever, you can just log on to the website, put in the details, the sizes that you want, download an SVG file straight into the software and away you go. Almost a one, two, three and there's your finished product. So I'm going to show you cutting some basic boxes using one of those tools up to and including something a little bit more creative to give you an idea on again how easy it could be for you to start making stuff that you could sell with the X-Tool S1. If you're going to follow along with this video then you're going to need a quantity of 3mm or 4mm ply whatever you prefer. You're going to need either some white wood glue type bond I always use or you can use super glue um, cyanoacrylate medium thin and a little bit of accelerator. This video is primarily going to revolve around using the software so let's get stuck in. So the first thing we're going to do is utilize one of the marvelous free websites that's available and it's a box generator website. It's called boxes.pi. I'll leave a link to it down below in the description. It's not always the fastest website to load, so don't worry if it takes a bob or two, a minute or two, sorry. So once it's loaded, click on the menu button and then from the little menu that appears, click on parts and samples and click burn in test. So this burn in test is going to allow us to decide what kerf we want to put in. Now the kerf is the width of material that the laser burns away when it cuts and we've got to make an allowance for that when we make a boxes. So on this page I'm going to type in 75mm for the inner width of the box. I'm going to set my material thickness to 4mm and in the print reference rectangle I'm going to set that to 0 so it lays out all the parts in a straight line and that's all I'm going to change and I'm going to hit download. Now once that's downloaded I'm going to utilize a different bit of software to edit that image. Now I'll leave a link to the edited image below. The reason for doing that is uh, Extool Creative Space at the moment uh, does not give us the ability to edit the SVG that I'm aware of. If you know different, please leave a link below. So I'm going to import my edited image directly into the software. And as mentioned earlier, I'm going to be using the features that I already covered in my second video, so I won't bother to go through those again. So it's given me the two layers. Green layer I want set to engrave, so I get solid text. The black layer I'm going to set to cart. I'm going to choose my material as 3 wood, three mil basswood, sorry. Even though I'm using 4 mil, it'll cut fine. And I'm just going to click back on my layers again to make sure it's set the power appropriately. And it certainly looks like it. So I just set my distance, focal height, and my work area. Move everything to inside my work area and we're good to go. Instantly, it's really important to leave the laser a couple of minutes after you've been cutting just so that the 
exhaust fan has got a chance to clear all of that beastly air out of the way. So back at the bench, I'm now going to find out which kerf size my laser actually needs by fitting them together and seeing how loose they are. So that one, the one mil, that's with no kerf setting whatsoever. And that's the amount that the laser's taken out. So that's quite slack. So let's whiz around to 1.1. That's a little tighter, but I think we could do better. 1.2. Still a little loose. 1 1.3 1 1.4 I think I'm going to go 1.3 and then I've got a little bit of room to get a bit of glue in so for my first box I'm going to make myself a little screw box for the workshop so I've gone back into boxes.pi and I've clicked a menu and this list appears and from this list I'm going to choose boxes and then a box a simple box when the simple box screen loads first thing we're going to set is the size so for my size I'm looking for 60 mil wide 100 mil deep and 40 mil tall and I want those as the internal measurement so I'll untick this outside box I'm going to go down to thickness and the thickness of my ply is 4 mil and then I'm going to go down to burn which is our kerf correction and set that to my setting 0 0.13 I'm going to click on generate just to get it to show me what it's going to deliver yeah looks good happy with that and then I'm going to click download so as soon as that's downloaded I'm going to click image in the creative space software click my file click open and get it straight into creative space now I don't want it that way round, so I'm just going to reorientate it to suit the size of the workpiece that I've got that'll do me that's perfect so now I'm just going to set the laser up as we've done before. I'll set my distance, my focal height. Then I'll set out my processing area, size my workpiece, and I can hit the go button. And it simply click together. Little bit of wood glue or CA glue. And a perfect little box. So one more box, this time I'm going to choose a slide and drawer box, possibly a little bit more useful. So back to boxes.pi, click on menu and then scroll down until you see slide and drawer box and give it a click. So when the page loads, make sure you fill in the sizes that you want. I've changed from the defaults, my width at 60 mil, depth at 100 mil and height at 40 mil and they're my inside sizes uh, 3 mil ply happy with that and I've changed my burn correction kerf size to 0.13 that's what we're going to get let's hit the download button pop it straight into creative space so that's the native file into creative space I'm just going to rearrange it now to make maximum use of my ply using exactly the same techniques that I did in the previous video. Okay, I think that's about the best use of space I can get. 
So I've set my focal height and my work area space. Now I just set my material to 3 mil bass wood again. So my output type to car, power is preset, and speed is set. Happy with that. Let's hit the button and run the job. Now the last thing I want to show you in this video is more an example of how getting creative using your imagination can really set yourself, set your products apart, make them a cut above the rest. Now Xtool have made this particularly easy by using the Xtool projects button up here in the top right hand corner. And when you click on it, you get taken to a page with a, a whole list of a, a mass of different things and the majority of them you can download for free these lovely people have designed these things and uploaded them for our consumption so the one i want to show you is a 3d palm tree so i'm going to search up the top for a palm tree and this is the one that caught my eye i think that looks uh, fantastic not necessarily the palm trees that's the bit where your inspiration cre creativity can click in and if you could come up with an idea that would mean something to your prospective customer, then I think you may well have a little something. Maybe you could get them to send a photograph of your pet, of their pet, sorry, and you could cut it out. But the idea is really, really simple. Cut out the imagery in a couple of parts, make it 3D, put some bits on the back to stand it off and away you go so here's the downloaded file opened up in creative space exactly as it will appear on your screen so the first thing I'm gonna do is delete the text now this parts in one piece all together but if I hover my mouse over this part I can see there are multiple pieces there and I want them all cut out together so I'm just gonna drag a box all around them right click and tell it to group together now i at this moment i don't know what size material i need for this so if i again drag a box over all of it and go up to this size boxes up here then i can see it's 200 high 155 156 wide so i can move that around to create the most efficient use of my material that i want so i've set the focal height of my laser i've also set the processing area to match the size of my workpiece which is 400 by 200 and I've chosen 3 mil basswood so the last thing I want to do is to make the laser cut out uh, from this section a background piece and I'm going to do that by choosing this larger image because that one fits in behind it and the size of this is 154 by 87 so I want about an inch around it for a border. If I draw a box, roughly 200 by 150. I can go back to my image here. That's 154 mil wide. If I want an inch either side, that's 25 mil, 50 mil. So that'll be 204.85. So I'm gonna unlock the relationship between the two so I can set these sizes. 204.85 and then back to this image again 87.23 plus the 50 137.23 137.23 so I'm just going to copy that image paste it in again over there and make sure that looks and I know it's center by the way because creative space has given me that crosshair in the middle if I move it off center it disappears 
so that looks pretty good happy with that so I'm gonna bin that everything's on the same layer because I've only got the one layer showing make sure everything's still set cart 115 one pass three more passwords so let's run the job <laughs> These pieces are very delicate. Some of the little connecting bits are extremely thin. So be very careful with it. So I'm going to turn it over because this piece goes on the back there. But you can arguably put it anywhere you want to. So all you need to do is, and I've got some, some of the little cutouts that come out. I'm just going to make sure they don't, when I place them there, that they don't show up on the front. So a little bit of medium cyano. And glue it all together. So there you have it. As I claimed at the beginning of the video, it's so simple and straightforward. A few settings on one of those box generator pieces of software, download your SVG file and you're away. The software makes it so, so simple. And that little, I'll call it a marketplace, the project area where lovely people have designed things and uploaded them so you can download them for free straight into the software couple of settings and away you go fantastic resource real easy to use piece of software so far i've got to say it's one of the easiest i've used but don't take my word for it head on over to xtool there's a link down below if you click that i may well earn a bob or two and I'll be very grateful for that. Have a look for yourself. Check it out. Amazing bit of kit. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Maybe even subscribe. And I hope to see you next time. Ta-ra.